I rise today to speak about the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the renomination of Rich Cordry to serve as its director. You know, several years ago, I began working on the idea for a consumer finance agency because our consumer credit system was badly broken. The laws were inconsistent, they were often arbitrary, the basic rules changed for the same kind of product, like a mortgage, depending on what kind of company sold it. People got cheated and, as we know, in 2008, reckless and dangerous mortgage lenders and Wall Street traders who made money off those mortgages nearly brought our entire economy to its knees. In 2010, Congress passed the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act. The consumer protection part of that was the new consumer agency, the CFPB, which was designed as a watchdog to keep credit card issuers, mortgage lenders, and student loan marketers from cheating people. Now, there was a lot of negotiation over the structure of this new agency. Hearing after hearing, markup after markup, floor vote after floor vote. But now, the same big bank lobbyists are fighting the same fight and using the same tired old talking points about the consumer agency that they were using years ago. You know, you really have to wonder just how much money they are making fighting this fight over and over. But now, let's go ahead one more time and talk about the facts. Congress built in many features to the consumer agency so that it would have strong oversight. And let me share just a few examples of that. The CFPB is the only agency in government that is subject to a veto from other agencies over its rules, the only one. The CFPB is the only banking regulator that is subject to a statutory cap on its funding, the only one. The CFPB director is legally obligated to produce regular reports to Congress, to testify before Congress regularly, and to comply with audits. And Mr. President, the CFPB has now testified more than 30 times before Congress, 30 times. In addition, the CFPB is subject to all the regular constraints in our system of government that constrain every agency, the Administrative Procedures Act, Judicial Review, and so on. And of course, there's the ultimate oversight. Congress can overrule any CFPB regulation. Now, since the agency has become law in 2010, there have been two major developments. The first is that Director Cordray has done an excellent job. He's won praise from consumer and industry groups and from Republicans and Democrats for his balanced rulemaking and his measured approach. Small institutions like community banks and credit unions, the ones that didn't cause this crisis, think he's been fair and effective. And other institutions that want a fair marketplace, those that don't want to make profit by cheating their customers, they like rich too. And Mr. President, the agency is working it's already forced credit card companies to refund nearly half a billion dollars that they tricked consumers out of. And the complaint center is giving tens of thousands of people a chance to fight back when they're cheated. The agency has helped out military families, seniors, students. It's helped a lot of people. The agency has become the watchdog that so many of us fought for, and rich, has surpassed even the high expectations that I had for him two years ago when I stood next to him in the Rose Garden as the president nominated him for the first time to the CFPB. Now there's been a second development since 2010 as well. The need for certainty has intensified. It's been nearly five years since the crisis, three years since the passage of Dodd-Frank. The banks need to know for sure who is in charge and what rules apply. They need to know that everyone will be playing by the same rules and exactly what those rules will be. And here's an example. Both lenders and consumer groups have praised 
the CFPB's new mortgage rules. Now it's time for everyone to know that these rules and not the unpopular default rules that are in Dodd-Frank that the new rules replaced, that the new rules are the law. That helps everyone. The American people deserve a government that will hammer out good rules, that will enforce those rules, and that will get out of the play way so that markets can work. They do not deserve endless relitigation of stale political disputes and the uncertainty caused by repeated filibusters of qualified and proven nominees. Now, Mr. President, I'm new to the Senate, but I don't understand why this body accepts a system where this kind of political stalemate isn't going to end in more government or less government, but just in bad government. Government that lacks consistency, lacks clarity, lacks predictability, that honest businesses and hardworking families need to plan a future. And I don't understand why we would let an honorable public servant like Rich Cordry get stuck in this nonsense. I don't understand when everyone says Rich is terrific, why we can't just vote on his appointment. You know, I know that some Republicans and some lobbyists think that Rich's appointment, if they filibuster it, that they're somehow going to be able to shut down the work of the agency. They think they can shut down the agency and protect the big banks from any meaningful consumer rules. Well, Mr. President, they can use all the slogans they want. They can talk about things like accountability. But outside the halls of this Congress and the fancy lobbying offices around Washington, no one wants more fine print and more tricks and traps. No one thinks it's OK to cheat regular people and to cut special deals for giant banks. And no one wants to take cops off the beat so that big banks can break the rules without being held accountable. So let me be clear to those who think this filibuster will shut down the work of the new agency. Let me be crystal clear. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is the law, and it's here to stay. Do your dirtiest in obstructing the confirmation of the new director, but the agency will keep on doing what it does best, fighting for the American people. We, all, we fought to get this consumer agency. We fought the big banks. We fought their army of lobbyists. We fought hard, and we won. Now we have a strong and independent watchdog to stop the banks from cheating families. We're not giving up now. Thank you, Mr. President. I suggest the absence of a quorum.